This is a video about ultrasound in the diagnosis of endometriosis, ABCDE. My name is Suzanne Johnson and I'm a gynaecologist from Southampton. And this video is to tell you how I use the ID classification. I start with a systematic routine pelvic ultrasound looking for the features of endometriosis like adenomyosis, ovarian endometrioma and ovarian adhesions. Then I look for the sliding sign in the pouch of Douglas. Then I look for nodules of deep infiltrating endometriosis. And lastly, I look at the soft markers of site-specific tenderness and pelvic mobility. When I do a systematic transvaginal um, scan of the pelvis, I don't routinely ask the patients to have a bowel preparation. The main thing is to be really gentle and to have the patient's position in a, in a good way so that the patient's bottom overhangs the edge of the couch a little bit and either has knee supports or a chair for the feet. And then I always say, let your knees go floppy as this really relaxes uh, the legs and the pelvic floor. Then I slowly insert the transvaginal pro probe with plenty of gel on the outside of the probe and perform a normal systematic pelvic scan looking also at mobility and tenderness. And in women in whom I diagnose DIE, I will also do a transabdominal renal scan, as 3% of women with DIE might have silent hydronephrosis. Most of my images are in the longitudinal view, and I'll mention in the um, video when it's in the transverse plane. But generally speaking, this is the way that I'm oriented, um, with bladder at the top, then uterus underneath that, and bowel below. The first thing I look for is what position the uterus is in. And so here you can see an antiverted uterus where the uterus tilts toward the bladder, B for bladder, or a retroverted uterus where it tips backwards away from the bladder. But in endometriosis, you often see a uterus that is antiverted but retroflexed as the um, fundus of the uterus here is pulled backwards by adhesions. So in this orientation, the bladder is here. In this video, you can see a uterus with adenomyosis. You can see that it's bulky, it's globular, there's an indistinct endomyometrial junction, and there's stripy shadowing, a little bit like a luxiflex blind. In this video, you can see a different uterus with adenomyosis where there are islands of endometrium in the myometrium. This is an adenomyosis. And on 3D, you can see those islands as little outpouchings from the cavity. In this view on 3D, this is the myometrial fundus. This is the right side and this is the left side and the cervix is at the bottom. And you can see a very irregular endomyometrial junction. This is typical of adenomyosis. In this video, you can see an ovarian endometrioma um, and it is adherent to the uterus, to the back of the cervix. You can see it there. And this now is in the transverse plane where you can see this is low down level of the uterus and this is an ovarian endometrioma, a unilocular cyst with no solid material, some shadowing and ground glass echogenicity adhering to the back of the uterus. And to compare that with the normal ovary on the patient's other side, you can see that when I very gently press the probe in and out very gently, you can see that this ovary cantilevers a little bit, it's freely mobile. Here again is a transverse plane. This is the um, back of the cervix. The back of the cervix is here. And here you can see an ovarian endometrioma adherent to the back of the cervix and also adherent to the other ovary. And this is a, a less obvious endometrioma. And this is called kissing ovaries. Often in reports on women who later turn out to have endometriosis, there's a comment that the ovary is low. And at that point, the transverse view is very useful. You must suspect adhesions when you see an ovary this low. So here you can see the bladder again is, is at the front. This is the uterus, the cervix. This is the back of the cervix. And here is this ovary adhering to the back of the cervix. And in this plane, you will see that it is attached to uterosacral ligaments, but more of that later. And here is the difference between a heavy ovary, a polycystic ovary on this side, 
and an endometrioma, which is adherent to the utero ligaments. Both are low in the pelvis, but one is freely mobile and the other one is an endometrioma and it is adherent to the uterus. The other thing you look for is hydrosalpinges. Um, because the fallopian tubes can be affected by endometriosis, but mainly it's due to adhesions near the ovary and you especially see this when you have kissing ovaries. So here again in this longitudinal view you can see a, a uterus and then the ovary and here is the hydrosalpinx. And if you do 3D of that area sometimes uh, it shows you very clearly that this is a definite hydrosalpinx and it's a unilocular tubular mass with thick irregular walls, incomplete septa, an anechoic or echogenic fluid content and you may have shadowing. And that's it. Thank you very much.